like I promised, I was going to do a kind of like a, a run through on how, how I do Road to Asesino episodes. Um, basically, like you see a lot of stuff that I have, I ha a lot of it I have prepared already. Um, this is kind of just like a sneak peek behind what I do and what I use. So like right here are my graphical renders. Um, a lot of this stuff, it's all created in Photoshop. So I'll quickly just open it up. And um, you're going to have to bear with me. The computer might not be as fast as it normally is just because I'm screen recording this and I'm capturing my audio at the same time. So it might take a little bit of a second to uh, load up or whatnot. So right here you can pretty much see like I have my uh, profile set right here in the corner. And um, I have a lot like a, a few different items that I actually I turn on and off as I'm building it now. Uh, I kind of took cues from uh, a person that I have working on my uh, my t-shirt ideas. His name is ZJ. He is uh, a graphic designer. He's actually pretty... He, he does some pretty sweet stuff. He's done some things for Esco and Mercusio and things like that. And um, he kind of, you know, like he puts out tweets and he just says, you know, like, oh, uh, if you want to stay neat, put things into groups and everything. So you can see right here, like I have everything organized and as it goes, like all the elements will be turned on and off and whenever I need them to um, work and everything. So if I want to just get rid of it completely, I can take it out. A lot of the times I'll have a video in the background. So this is just a, a standard video that I load into uh, Photoshop. And then this is how I'll build my uh, graphics from here. So I have my timeline at the bottom right here and it just everything gets animated within um, Photoshop. I, I just find it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, at this level because I'm not really too great at um, if I were to use uh, say After Effects or anything like that I'm not really that great in that uh, aspect you know the two main programs I'll be using is Photoshop Premiere um, another program that I will be using is Final Cut and then you know the iMovie uh, Motion is pretty much like Apple's answer to um, to the uh, After Effects for uh, from Adobe. So here it is. Like this is just the basic uh, little representation of it. And uh, right here in the corner, you'll see my Whisper icon pop in. And then right here, you have my Templar icon. Now that's kind of the newest thing that I'm going to be including in the second episode of Road to Assassino. Um, when you uh, technically are supposed to hear whispers, and then when I do hear them in the game, um, a lot of the times my actions in the game will reflect what I hear so uh, this will be a new added little feature uh, we'll kind of give it a test run see how you guys enjoy it how you guys like it and uh, whatnot so let's open up Final Cut Pro which is the program I use for my first set of renders for uh, Road to Assassino now I can probably do this whole thing in uh, Adobe Premiere but I just choose to do it in uh, first in After Effects or sorry, not After Effects, but uh, Final Cut X, uh, just because I find it a little bit easier to work with this one and a little bit more precise, especially with the ability to kind of snap to certain features um, in the video. So right here, you'll see uh, me just kind of going through the timeline and you'll see uh, I have quite a few things. So I have my standard video right here. You can hear the audio for that. Um, then right here, this is actually my um, graphic uh, overlay which is the overlay that has the kills, stuns, and streaks and then above that I have my graphic overlay for uh, whether it's a Templar icon and if I scroll down then now it switches over to a whisper icon. Now I do have a couple more elements that I do include. This one right above here if it timeline slows down at all is uh, just something that did not fit into this portion so if I just crop it down a little bit I could fit it in uh, snugly in there I don't want to overstretch it so that should fit there properly and then that will just get re-rendered in the timeline um, right here here's my new little profile sets I did post a Facebook question um, if you guys haven't followed me on my Facebook fan page yet, a lot of the times I will be including um, kind of fan-based questions or polls, and I'll be asking the uh, community like what you guys think. So 
I asked for the some of the questions I asked is like, is the HUD too big? Is it too small? You guys said, you know, maybe shrink it down a little bit. So I shrunk it down by about 15%. We'll see how that works right now. Um, you guys and I another question I asked is whether or not you want the profile set at the beginning of each time that I respawn or do you guys want to just at the beginning of the match and then every single time that I switch my profile sets for it to reflect that so that's kind of what I'm going to do uh, it's kind of what you guys voted for so there's the profile set and then obviously as the timeline continues it's just going to go to the basic um, to the basic timeline where it's just the uh, ability icons afterwards I'm not going to have it on the whole time and I don't want it taking up too much of the screen so that's pretty much like once that is done I will render out this project so let's see if I can do that kind of quickly for you guys hopefully the uh, computer won't take too much resources and hopefully it doesn't burn up or anything like that so we'll just quickly render that out to my desktop save it on my desktop let's see how long that will take hopefully not too long thing is uh the reason i do use final cut pro x is um well when i'm not screen capturing it actually takes a lot less time to do this so hopefully it doesn't take too much time if it does i'll just kind of cut the video clip and do some creative editing afterwards all right then so um where we left off from last i did a little bit of creative editing took a little bit of time to render out that video so here it is it's um on my desktop so now I'm gonna just pop open uh, Premiere and uh, it's a lot easier when you're working on these videos in these kind of timeline settings it's a lot uh, a lot more manageable a lot easier to kind of notice what's going on and whatnot so uh, once again you can take a little bit of time to load this thing up I think it's my first time loading it up after my uh, fresh install OS I, uh, I updated my OS system to uh, OS Lion, so uh, it might take a little bit of time. There it is. Start a new project. We're gonna go HDV. Uh, don't really need a name for it as of yet, and uh, we're gonna stick to uh, let's see, 720p with 30 frames per second. So we'll open that up just to make it easier on ourselves, and. Wait for it to load, as usual. A little bit of loading time for these, and okay. So we're gonna just import uh, some video. Let's go on my desktop. Rotate Assassino. The video is actually six gigs in size, which is actually pretty huge for a video like that. So hopefully, I can cut that down a little bit. I will be doing, you know, a render here and then another render in um, iMovie where I usually do my commentary. I could have done the commentary in uh, Final Cut Pro. I just found it a lot easier to work with. So this is just an active preview of this. So you can see the, uh, the overlay is there. And if I scroll over to the front, I got my uh, profile sets. Now you're gonna probably wanna find out how exactly I do all this uh, And there we go so we're gonna go right to the beginning um, you can you know scrub it through to be more precise to get it at the exact time that it appears now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go title new title I want to still title I don't want it to do anything any movements or anything like that and you're gonna be creating titles uh, for every single change in um, in text so I will just maximize this just to give it give you guys an overall view. All right, guys. So uh, while we're getting started on this, um, you're at the title sequence right now. So what you basically want to do is just select your title sequence uh, or your typing tool. And uh, I'm quickly just going to forward to a portion of the clip where I actually have this uh, written out. So what I'm going to do is just quickly click on it obviously when you first start off you have a zero points now what I like to do is I'll switch my um, font type or my font family to uh, Trajan Pro which is the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or sorry the Assassin's Creed uh, uh, type font 
uh, bold just to make it pop a little bit. You can obviously edit the uh, size of it. I like to keep it at uh, around 60, 63, uh, depending on uh, the actual size of it. I did actually have to play with the size a little bit this time, mainly because I did edit out the um, the actual uh, overlay. So I made it a little bit smaller. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll make it a little bit smaller here, make it a 60. And uh, that just fits perfectly right there. So uh, as soon as I kind of hit away from it, it's nicely uh, placed right there. And then I have enough room for another uh, number next to it in case I hit double digits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, copy that with uh, Command C if you're on the Mac or Control C if you are on the PC. And then while holding uh, Shift down, I will just move this down. And uh, same thing, copy it again, click it, Shift down move it down to uh, my desired spot again copy paste and shift down and that brings me to there well this is where I want to just kind of edit the size of this one so this one I'm gonna put up to about 65 uh, so if I can get it there 64 65 and just center it a little bit and uh, that's pretty much it so that's your first um, type font kind of uh, numbering system for your HUD system and uh, as you guys can see you can just quickly move through the timeline and then as soon as you kill somebody what you're gonna wanna do is hit it right here where it's a new title base open up a new title system obviously uh, try to keep the numbers the same you know logical order uh, or whatnot because I, I think I've already done this this is just kinda going over it in basics again and then what you're gonna wanna do is select your type and then quickly hit that so let's see one kill and then it's going to be uh, however many points I get for this kill and uh, it's going to overlay it because um, I already have something on the timeline and it's going to overlay it on the uh, actual uh, numbering system so it's going to look like it's kind of uh, over top of it but uh, that will quickly you know we'll get rid of that quickly when we actually work with it and then put it all on the timeline you can see my timeline right here so once you have all your title sequences done you know with each one retrospect to what numbers that you guys can see in the preview window right here and then all you have to do is just kind of put it all together like a puzzle cut it at the right points where you do have your HUD system where you don't and keep track of those points and have it keep uh, going so that's pretty much the basics of th doing that and hopefully you guys you know understand what's going on in this thing if you have any questions ask me um, I do you know promote people doing this kind of stuff if you guys want to do uh, you know your own style HUD or anything any other ideas that you might have but uh, I do you know ask you guys not to copy me you know outright like just flat out copy me what I'm doing because uh, you know like I, I respect what you want to do but you know have some respect for what I do and things like that so Hopefully you guys liked it and liked this little sneak peek and uh, I'll have Road to Asesino episode 2 for you guys very very soon.